19 to 92. The Jerry Ryan Show, Monday to Friday, 9 till 12 on 2FM. Now, um, Patricia, good morning. Morning, Jerry. How are you? Not bad. I'm just trying no. to ask you if, um, okay. if glass is legal or illegal on, to protect yourself inside your house. Oh, right. Yeah, this yeah. is... Uh, I live on my own, This so. is going back to me talking about yeah. uh, the rights of uh, householders yeah. uh, to protect themselves. Uh, there are very few rights. By the way, can I just read out something, Patricia, before I talk to you? Yeah. This comes from John, and in fairness, John, uh, you're right. Jerry, exactly how many times has Michael Ring, Fina Gale TD from Mayo, to bring forward his household protection bill before you give him credit for it? Ring constantly stands up at the dial again just yesterday and calls for greater protection of householders who protect themselves. John, um, my apologies. Um, I wasn't aware that Michael Ring was uh, the champion on this occasion and he deserves fulsome credit for what he's doing. Michael Ring, do not give up. Now, Patricia, you're asking, the old, in the old days, before people um, became obsessed with litigation, what a lot of uh, commercial and private properties used to do is they'd put some cement or mortar on the top of the wall yeah. uh, and then they'd embed broken glass That's into what it. I did. Now, this was a pretty efficient way of stopping people getting into your property. Just property. Stopped them, Jerry, because they got in. Oh, really? Yeah, and he caught himself. And there was blood in the garden and blood in the walls and they robbed the shed. And so that glass, is, if it's illegal, it's going nowhere. It's staying there. Well, you see... It's not, there's nothing saying that it's illegal. I'll tell you the problem. Um, it's to do with occupiers' liability. Are you yawning yet, are you? No. Good girl. <laughs> I'm, I'm all ears. Occupiers' liability. You are um, the invitor. The person coming on to your property is the invitee. If it appears that they can get onto your property, it goes back to a case, I think, called McNamara versus CIE, I think, is it? Or the ESB. No, McNamara versus the ESB. Um, and in that case, a young boy, uh, illegally, I suppose you would say, or wrongfully climbed over a fence of an ESB substation um, and got in and injured himself, right? And the claim was that he had uh, been invited because it was possible for him to get in by the owners of the property. Um, so therefore, they had a duty of care f- towards him. So therefore, if he injured himself, even though he shouldn't have been there, um, they were responsible. Now, that kind of applies to the glass situation. So you have to decide, well, whether... are you, is it? See, I think this is all complete bunkum, to be honest. And, and, I, and I think these laws only invite, if you have a big sign up saying, Patricia's Diner, come in, the best burgers in Dublin. Then I think you probably have a legal obligation to take care of your customers. But I don't think you should have to have a legal obligation to take care of somebody who climbs over your wall to rob you. Such from the wall. I mean, well, you no, can't. Pre- as, far, as far as the law is concerned in Ireland, if you injure either personally yourself or set up a practice or a situation that will cause injury or is designed to cause injury or might even um, unwittingly cause injury to a person who's trespassing on your property, you will be responsible. Well, the law is an ass, Jerry. Well, the law is an ass, madam. That's exactly it's the a case. Ass. Because I need to have that there. Yeah. I need to protect myself. I live on my own. Not and only I that, imagine that. this fella gets over the wall, right? He could bleed to death out and, there for all I care. And, yeah, I know, I can, I can sense that. Um, and he gets over the wall and he's coming at you, right? With, his, with a knife in his hand, shouting, I'm going to rape you, then I'm going to chop up the dog, and then I'm going to steal the family jewels, right? Mm. Now, you um, reach into the, the cupboard and you take out knife. the knife cleaver and you chop his hand off, right, which would put a stop to it. Um, you, I guarantee it, I guarantee it, missus, you're the one sitting in the guard of the station answering the questions and being charged with assault. Well, that's a disgrace. It really is a disgrace. How it else is. can you protect yourself from these people? I mean, it happened to me twice, Jerry. How many times does it have to happen before you get killed or really badly injured by these people that are getting into to rob you? How are you supposed to protect yourself? Well, I the- way, especially when there's no men in the house. The first time that I became in and very... And these people know there's no men, Jerry. They're just, they're just opportunists. That's what they are. Well, I remember the first time I became very interested in this was many, many years ago. You know the uh, comedian Spike Milligan? I don't know whether you're old enough I to do, remember. Yeah. Do you remember Spike? Yeah. Now, the Sp- wrong sort of party. Yeah. Spike, well, uh, Spike was a very elderly man. These gurriers broke into his house and terrorised him. Yeah. Spike got the, the shotgun, shot at one of them when he was legging it over the wall. And the fella gets a, a, an arse full of lead, right? Oh, now, it doesn't kill him, but it certainly, I would imagine, uh, spoiled his day. 
Spike ended up being interviewed by the police. Milligan was then charged. And at one point, it actually looked like he was nearly going to go to jail. No, sir. I mean, what's And then these the fellas will then... But then the, you're protecting the, the criminal. And then the, then the next thing you get... I'm serving a civil bill on you here. What do you think of that? And you go, really, what that's for? For injuring my client. Um, he was the fellow who broke into your house there recently and now we're going to sue you as well for damages. Yeah. Oh, it's terrible. It's, it's, as I said to you, Jerry, the law's an ass. Well, Michael There's Ring... no way I might we, take we, that we, glass down anyway. No, you, no well... You, Absolutely not. I can't advise you to keep it I there. I know you but can't, but I'm not taking it down no matter what. Now, and when I go, what, what, what about Michael Ring? We should find out more about what he's saying in the dial, Jerry, shouldn't we? Michael Ring, I don't live in Dublin for, yeah. so I'm ruled out. You know, so that's that's another. No, Michael note. rings from Mayo. Yeah, but yeah. You have to live in Dublin for or, or Quality Street somewhere before you get something done. You know, before you're protected. I mean, go to Castlenock. There's not a ramp in Castlenock. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you, you look around you, Jerry. Do you think they no, only? Do you, do you think they only great. put the ramps in the dodgy <laughs> areas that we live in? <laughs> yeah, the dodgy areas that you live in. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't live in, in one of these quality streets, so we have rams and we have up the, But my priority is the glass. All I right, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Cost. No, I know you're not going to take down the glass. I know that. I'm not. No, no. Here's another if one. If the came to the door today, Jerry, I wouldn't take it down. I don't, I and if they take it down, I'd put it back up. You don't have to convince me. I believe you completely. What about the? Here's another you thing. Have you have to be robbed twice, Jerry. And ter- you know. Here's something. Else, here's something that you might consider adding to it, right? Mm. Um, a caller has said that grease. Mixed Jerry, gre- I tried grease. Grease mixed with dog poo on top of yeah. the wall is very effective. <laughs> I tried grease first. Yeah. It didn't work. So the only thing is the glass. And, and I have a splintered, and I, yeah, one is, I have a smashing job done of it. Yeah. So it's a deterrent, but they still And did you put that up there up. yourself, Patricia? I did, Jerry, yeah. Fair I did. You. I got up the ladder and I put it all up. Mm. I was collecting bottles for weeks. Weeks. I had people collecting for me as well. Yeah. And I smashed them all up with a hammer in a, in a sack. And up they went. Up and there's scanty loads of splinters in between everything. And there's a ton of it on it. You know. So if you get up there, you're getting up there and I don't care if you bleed to that. Well, I tell the you last fellow that got in did cut himself. And, and did he cut himself badly? I don't know. But there was blood on the wall. And not bad blood. enough, says not you. Not bad enough, no. As I said, he could be bleeding to death out there and yeah. I wouldn't even get an ambulance. Do you know that? I wouldn't even get an ambulance. That's how bad I'm gone. If they get on my property... And I'm trying to protect myself. I live on my own. There's nobody, no men with me. That's it. They bleed to death. And Jerry, all this business, oh, if someone got into my backyard, I'd run out and I'd do You don't. You freeze. You actually freeze. Of course you, you do. Because and you know what you're... I was sitting s- on my wall one night. I was in the kitchen reading and I looked out. And what was and he I doing? I nearly had a heart attack. And before that, I, I was real brave. Oh, yeah, I don't know. There. No. You don't. No. You buckle. You absolutely buckle. Yeah, and you're safe for all. You're safe for doing that as well, Mrs. Going to tell yeah, you too. Yeah. All right, Patricia. I won't be that brave anyway, Jerry. To <laughs> I'm going to. I, I'm going to contact this Michael Ring fella, right? Tell Michael Ring that I don't live in, live in Dublin Forum. Would you ever look after the people that have ramps and all sorts? It's not Castle Knock. It's not Hunt right. It's not Quality Street. Okay, but right. we need to protect ourselves just okay. like the rest of them. All right. God bless you. Bye Thanks bye. a lot, Jerry. Bye yeah, bye. we need to talk to Michael Ring. I think and ask him what he's suggesting because it may be of interest to us. Afternoons on 2FM, kicking off at midday with Mickey Hayes and her all-request lunch. lunch. That's 120 minutes of your music. You choose, we obey, and play. Be in with a chance of winning the biggest prizes on radio. Then at 2 p.m., Rick O'Shea perks up your day with a box full of afternoon delights. Interviews from the biggest stars and bizarre topics to keep your brain in motion. Afternoons on 2FM. You work, we play. Now, back to intruders. Um, Michael Ring, the TD, credited by one of our callers with championing the uh, protection of householders, particularly those who decide to protect themselves against uh, intruders, is on the line. Deputy Michael Ring, good morning. Good morning, Jerry. How are you this morning? Welcome. First of all, my apologies for not um, appreciating and understanding that you were at the cutting edge of this yourself already. Um, uh, we've had, to, in fact, you'll be glad to know that quite a few of your uh, constituents uh, got on to us very quickly to say, well, I think you'll find that Michael Ring's been talking about this for some time. Now, I know that you're on your way to a funeral, um, so we will not, and that's a very tragic story as well, um, and you may want to mention that at the end of this. Um, you spoke in the Doyle yesterday, and this is part of an ongoing uh, campaign that uh, you have brought to the House. Will you tell us what you're suggesting? Well, what I'm saying is, Jerry, 
opinion, and it's something that I have been looking about, I have been looking for a long time. I mean, really in this country presently, the law is with the criminal. And I'll just give you an example. If somebody goes in, into, into your house tonight and he robs your house, and that person is, is arrested by the police, and the next thing he's charged, the first thing, if he, the, the first thing they do, they'll give him free legal aid. And they'll give him all the services that he needs. And nobody will actually contact you to see how you and your wife and your family are feeling after your robbery and after what is after happening in your house. Now, also, we've had a number of cases in this country where people had to use force in relation to intruders into their home. And the, the possibility is there, and it has happened in the past, where people actually have been prosecuted for not using a reasonable force. And in the law as it stands, it says you can only use reasonable force. And I'd say, what's reasonable force? What I want to change in the law is if an intruder comes into your home and that person comes in and he's unwelcome he's either in robbing or assaulting or he's in your home and he shouldn't be in your home and you use whatever force you use that there is no possibility of you getting prosecuted because you're protecting your home your wife your family your children and i think the law should be with the person that's not breaking the law but instead of this now the law is with the person that's actually breaking the law and that has to change because we have had cases in the past high profile cases we've had cases where people have actually been brought to the court where the, the state has said that they have not used, they have more, used more than reasonable, unreasonable, or reasonable force. Mm -hmm. But I think the law has to change and the law has to come with the, the, with the householder. Now, of course, an awful lot of law of this nature in this country is uh, pre precedent driven. Uh, the, the case, uh, as it comes before the court, the way it's decided becomes the law. But um, I think you're suggesting that legislation is absolutely necessary. It has to come, Jerry. It has to come because, you know, and there's no point pretending. And I listened to, to, to Joe Duffy yesterday on the way down th yeah. from Dublin, and I heard, you know, elderly people in their 70s and their 80s. You know, we have a serious situation in this country with drugs at the moment. We have people, you know, when they go into people's homes, some of these people are not using reasonable force when, when they're assaulting these people. And why should the person that has to protect their home or their family be expected to use reasonable force? When you consider the fellow who broke into the young family and threatened to hammer or stab the baby, if the safe wasn't opened. I mean, sure, what would be reasonable force in relation to dealing with him? I would imagine, you know, if you had a gun you should be allowed to use it. Well, you see, Jerry, the situation is, that's the problem, and the person that the man, that the man that's home that was broken to yesterday, if he used unreasonable force, and this man makes a complaint to the guard that he felt that there was unreasonable force used, the, 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 the householder could be brought to the courts, and, and he could be prosecuted, and the criminal will get the free legal aid, you know, to actually prosecute the person that he was, the person that was offending his home. And it's time now, Jerry. We have talked about this in the doll. I have raised it in the doll. Now, yesterday, Minister Brian Cowan has, has said that, yes, that the government are looking at legislation, and he did promise that legislation would be before the doll before the end of the year to deal with this, because this problem is not going to go away. So the Taunishta has promised that legislation will be put before the House for consideration before the end of the year. Before the end of the year in relation to this, and I mean, because they did vote Do you on believe that there's anything on paper? Because I know of no committee or commission or group, working group, who's looked at this in actual fact I've heard lip service being paid uh, to the issue but I do you know if there's any work has been done on this because this would be a law reform commission issue well the law reform I, I think the law reform I think Jerry if, you, if I go back and I remember some documentation coming in a number of months ago I think mm -hmm. the law for reform commission actually recommended that this legislation should come if I remember now yeah. and I mean you can well you could be right you could be right yeah, and I think that they made a recommendation that, that, that the law has to change in this effect as well and that's my understanding and I'm okay. open to correction in that but I remember some documentation coming into me at some stage and I was actually delighted to uh, see and it. What, was the re what was the reaction when once again you were on your feet dealing, dealing well, with this subject yesterday well yeah, we see I spoke yesterday to Jerry on a number of radio stations because mm. I, I, I've been consistently at this for the last two years because this problem is not going to go away and I've consistently raised this and uh, at, at I, I have to say that something has to be done and I'm saying this to you this morning and to your listeners you know this problem is not going away uh, people are there's more and more robberies in this country there's more and more assault and it's getting to be more vicious assaults as you said yep. about that man and his child oh, so a, a, a two week old child and a two, a two I'll year hammer the child if you don't open the f that's right how did that man and his wife feel I mean Jerry you know it. you're a father you know it. the one thing that you love and the one thing that you will protect and you will do whatever your you children. have to is your children and your wife yeah. and here's a situation that these guys can come in and threaten we have to do something and we have to give the power back to the homeowner and I was on a debate yesterday and another program with, with another legal person mm. and he doesn't want the law changed of course these people don't want the law changed but if they were faced with this situation if this situation happened to them they would know all about it if they know the effects that it has it has on, 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 on 
women, it has on families, and it has on everybody. And I know it as somebody that was robbed. I know the effect. That awful feeling that somebody was in your home, that awful feeling that these people were there, and that awful feeling not to know who was actually in your house that went through and, you know, taking children's tapes and, you know, robbing your house and doing damage in your house and then going away. It's the worst thing that can actually happen. And all I can say, Jerry, the law has to change and the power has to be with the people. And whatever force they use, and as I said on radio programs before, and I said it at all, if somebody comes into your home at 12 o'clock at night or 2 o'clock in the morning, he's not coming in for a cup of tea and you should be able to use whatever force you have to use to protect your wife, your family and your home. And I can tell by your tone that we can rely on you to keep this alive issue. I can tell you, Jerry, I'm going to keep the pressure on the government until the legislation comes in to protect the homeowner. OK. Deputy Michael Ring, do you want to say anything about the funeral that you're on the way to? Well, you know, we have a terrible tragedy in my home in my hometown. This is actually the third tragedy in three weeks and uh, just all my thoughts are with the family and Westport is a very tight-knit community and it's a community that's great supports out there and all I say to this family and to other family is the support is there for young people if they need it. If there's young people listening to this programme this morning, I'm asking them if, you know, if they feel under any kind of pressure, the services are there and try and use the services. This has had an awful effect on the families. On the this town. is the young boy who the killed young, himself. Yeah, yeah. That's it. And I just all my thoughts is with mm. them and with the other families that have been affected. We had okay. a road accident three weeks ago. So we've had a bad three weeks in the town. And as I say, you couldn't get a better town than Westport, a better community town than Westport. Okay. And I'm saying to young people and to people out there, there's people there that care about you. There's people there that's prepared to help you. There's people there that give you whatever help you want. And I'm asking young people to, you know, if they, if they feel any kind of pressures on them to go and talk. The services are there. Uh, there's plenty of people there to help them and I'm asking them to, to, to try and you know, uh, take up these services and you know, whatever help they need is there for them. OK, um, Deputy Michael Rain, thank you very much you indeed. Very much, Good morning to you. Um, of course, that's the funeral of young Michael Hopkins that uh, Michael Ring is on his way to. Um, you may recall his friend committed suicide, I think it was only about a week before as well. So there has been terrible tragedy in Westport. And uh, to the people of Westport, I say this morning, you are in our thoughts and prayers. And I know you're a strong, resilient people with a great tradition and a great sense of community. Um, and I know you will all bounce back very, very quickly indeed. Um, but of course, the loss of children so young under such terrible circumstances is something that will be with you forever. Now, first of all, just let me say to the legal scientists listening this morning, and you know, I'm not stupid, right? I understand that when you're talking about redefining something like reasonable force, that you're dealing with a very difficult, difficult, difficult issue. Redefining what is reasonable is highly scientific in terms of putting this into legislation. And that's primarily why anything to do with the definition of what is reasonable behaviour is normally and mainly contained in case law in this country. In other words, they look to the previous decisions of courts and they say, well, in Ryan versus Ryan, it was decided that, you know, if you took a hammer out of your handbag, that that wasn't reasonable, but that if you gave the fella a dig, that was reasonable. And then they try and match the circumstances and that's how they, a lot of this kind of law and a lot of the results of cases that are taken particularly against um, householders who have used force to repel an intruder are decided based on the definition of reasonable force um, or who is reasonable. That's another big issue when you were a young law student. We spent a lot of time agonising what, what, who was the reasonable man. The man, the reasonable man was a bit an imaginary fellow on the Clapham omnibus or the man who rolled up his shirt sleeves on, on, a, on a Saturday morning and went mowing the lawn. It was all these nonsensical, ridiculous sort of ideas of who the reasonable man was. They never mentioned the reasonable woman, of course, in the old days. But I understand how difficult and how complex it, w it, w it is to do this. But that is no answer for, uh, it, you know, that is no explanation or no excuse um, to do absolutely nothing. We have been legislating um, all over the civilised world for centuries to deal with problems that beset and bedevil society. Um, we have very smart legislators. We indeed have great draftsmen and we know how to do these things. It can be done. It's having the political will. There's also a strange attitude um, politically um, in law enforcement and amongst certain members of the legal profession. I'm not sure what the judiciary think about it. They may have the same opinion. Um, th that... <sighs> You know, we shouldn't, the unbalance that to give the paramount or the primacy rights to the householder 
would be to somehow open the floodgate for some sort of Armageddon of violence against um, those who seek to um, break into your home or to cause you physical harm. That's absolute nonsense as well. That's not an excuse for doing nothing either. Um, it's In fact, I find it deeply offensive when you hear people making intellectual or legal scientific arguments saying, well, of course, you know, we have to consider the balance of justice, blah, blah, blah. Look, th- it's very simple. You must cherish and protect the right and the just and punish the criminal. That's where you start. Nowhere else. 19. Jerry Ryan on 2FM. Now, Geraldine, good morning to you. How are you? Good morning, Jerry. How are you? Good. Leap year. Well, we were reminded of this morning. I've forgotten about that. Today is the uh, day when women can apparently, allegedly, uh, pop the question. Um, some of the newspapers have decided to take the angle that men should all hide today under in cellars and behind doors and at the back of hedges. Um, you popped the question. When did you do it? I did, Jerry. Um, it's a type of anniversary today. It's 16 years today since I proposed to my husband, Tony. Does it seem like 16 years? It doesn't, actually. No, it's flown in. It really has. It's hard to believe. Yeah. And you popped the question. I did. And I have to be... Well, I suppose you're married 16 years, so it seems to have yeah. gone quite well. Um, was he surprised, was he? I think he was. I had only met him in the November beforehand, in November 91. Yeah. We met at a funeral. And... Um, my aunt died, and Tony was a friend, seemingly of my cousin, which I didn't know, and he was asked to do a reading in the church, and he did the first reading in the church, and I did the second reading, and when we went back to the, the pub, as you do, for um, uh, lunch and a few drinks later on, we got talking, and I just I had an eye for him, and we got to talk, <laughs> and... I haven't heard that phrase for a lot. <laughs> I had an eye for him. Well, that was in the November 91, yeah. and in February 92, I proposed to him, and we were married the following October. So we'd be 16 years married in October. Oh, well, congratulations. Yeah. Well done. And can you remember the circumstances? What did you say? Um, I'll tell you what happened. I took him out for dinner out to the Pagoda restaurant in Sutton. and um, the Pagoda in Sutton. I remember that. Yeah, I remember that now. Yeah. And... Um, I was going to propose to him there, and I knew that my my uncle, who was the, the husband of my aunt who had died, it was his birthday around that time, and I knew that they were going to be back in the Towers pub in Ballymun, which is where we had met, because that's where my aunt had been from. And um, I just said, look, why don't we go over to the Towers, all the others are going to be over there. So I left the, the Bacoda restaurant, and uh, we went over to the Towers, and I just got down on my knee and asked him. <laughs> <laughs> you got down on your knee? <laughs> God only knows what he thought you were going to do. And we were given the finest Towers champagne <laughs> as a present. <laughs> and do you think that he was thinking of it himself? No, we kind of had, you know, vaguely spoken about maybe. Were you, you nervous? Know, were, were you nervous doing it? I probably was. I can't really remember it at the time now, but I knew it was something I wanted to do and I felt very strongly about and I just wasn't kind of prepared to waste. I knew I was 27 at the time. And so this is it, says you. I know what I want. I'm yeah, going to get it. And I want it and I want it now. I want it and I want it now. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it. And I'm still like that. <laughs> You're still like that. Yeah. Well, don't change. It's obviously working. No, no. And I think that for any girl who's in this situation, why wait around and why wait for, Actually, for him to do it? Can I ask that question this morning mm-hmm. to the rest of you? Are, are any of you thinking of doing it today? Um, well, I suppose they're not going to tell me. Sure, it'll be the cat will be out of the bag then. Has anybody done it already this morning? Eighteen fifty seven one five nine two two. Geraldine, it's been charming talking to you. Thanks a million. Thank you. And uh, happy anniversary. Thanks a million. So bye bye. Okay, bye bye. Bye bye. Uh, Paddy, good morning to you. Morning, Jerry. How are you? Very good, sir. Mother's Thanks. Day cards. Yes, I was just. Um, I came across one in a the shop there during the week, and it was um, Happy Mother's Day to an expectant mother. <laughs> Yeah. This started, folks. The reason Paddy's probably ringing us because we had one woman on said she saw a very bizarre card. It was Happy Single Mother's Day, um, which I, I think is utterly ludicrous, to be perfectly honest. But Happy Expectant Mother's Day. Yeah. That's, that's madder. Absolutely. Yeah. That's much madder. Yeah, I think, I mean, and is there I, a picture I, of a bird up the dove on the card, is there? There isn't really, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd be, I'd be afraid to send an expectant mother a card like that, you know? I could you imagine? 
Absolutely, Could you yeah. imagine going to somebody with a card that said Happy Mother's Day, expectant mother? What do you think of that? <laughs> I mean, it's so commercialised now, Jerry. It's just, it's ah, just but it's ludicrous, record, though. It's yeah. absolutely ludicrous. Don't matter, it is, yeah. All right. Good morning. Thanks, Jerry. Love the show. Take Thank care. you very much indeed. Bye.